so in, uh, in November, last November, uh, six of us were able to go, including Hillary and I, to Israel. We decided against the whole tour because, well, the, it was a lot of, it was expensive at the time. But, um, but we were lucky because we had the greatest teacher for three days in the Galilee, the greatest teacher. It was the most wonderful experience. And we spent a whole week in, in Jerusalem just doing what we wanted to do, just so what we wanted to. But uh, the Galilee was the most experienced we had. It was wonderful. And um, we got to be um, Rami and his, and his wife, Gabby, and we got to even be at their house, and it overlooks the Sea of Galilee. Could you picture this? What a, and you see the shepherd and the, the sheep coming down the hill. I still see it, and the full moon. <laughs> I still see these things. But anyway, um, the past couple of days, um, Rami Danielli has been uh, giving us was kind of a three-part series. And um, those who have not been to those last two, don't worry, it's not over. And uh, Rami will take off where he left off, but he will fill it in for you. And you will love his teaching. Um, he is such a gifted teacher, um, and he has truth, what he says. So, um, and we, we love their hearts, and we love their spirit, and um, we have a lot of things to tell us today. So, um, at this time, I call up Rami and uh, Daniele, and come on down. I'm going to take this away. Do you need this at all? No. No? Okay. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. What a nice worship. If you have your Bibles, you know I want to continue with this spirit of worship, of praise. And I had a crazy idea while I was sitting there. I hope you will like it. Open your Bibles in Psalm 92, which is the Psalm for the Sabbath day. And allow me to enjoy myself, hopefully you will enjoy it also, I will read it in Hebrew. I want to read it in Hebrew because I don't know the Hebrew is, I know that the Hebrew has some very specific, special feeling to it. Those of you who know Hebrew, be blessed. Those of you who do not know Hebrew, be blessed while reading, following it in your English Bible. Okay, sounds good? Then we will say a word of prayer and we will start. So it's Psalm 92. Hallelujah. Mizmor Shir, Leom HaShabbat. Tov lehodot laadonai, ulezamer leshimcha elyon. Lehagid baboker chasdecha, veemunatcha balelot. Alei asor veale navel. עלי היגיון בכינור, כי שמחתני אדוני בפועליך, במעשה ידיך ארנן. מה גדלו מעשיך אדוני, מאוד עמקו מחשבותיך. איש בער לא ידע, וכסיל לא יבין את זאת. בפרוח רשעים כמו עשב, ויציצו כל פועלי אבן, להישמדם עדי עד. ואתה מרום לעולם אדוני, כי הנה אויביך אדוני, כי הנה אויביך יאבדו. התפרדו כל פועלי אבן, ותרם כראם קרני, בלותי בשמן רענן. ותבט עיני בשורי, בקמים עלי מרעים, תשמענה אוזני. צדיק כתמר יפרח. כארז בלבנון ישגה, שתולים בבית אדוני, בחצרות אלוהינו יפריחו. עוד ינובון בשיבה, דשנים ורעננים יהיו. 
להגיד, כי ישר אדוני, סורי, ולא אבלת בו. To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen? So Abba, thank you for this, thank you so much for this Shabbat. Oh Abba, I bless this holy crowd, saints, B'Shem Yeshua Mashiach, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. Thank you Abba for this Shabbat, thank you, I pray that you will flow through my mouth, and even with the accent, that people will be blessed because they will drink and eat from your river of life. From the tree of life, Abba, that you will give us all today, this morning. Abba, we love you. We worship you. We love you, Abba. Forgive our sins, Abba. Thank you that you are forgiving God. Oh, Abba, what we, could, what we would do without your mercies. What we would do without your grace. You know us inside out. We cannot perform. We cannot put up our front for a show. You know our in words members, you know, inward thoughts. And to you, Rak Lecha, Agvora Vatiferet Ki, only to you, the honor and the glory forever and ever, B'Shem Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Give him a clap. <laughs> Hallelujah, Abba. How many of you have been here the last two nights? Ooh, so quite a few haven't been, okay? Of course, I will not repeat what we did last night. Uh, I will give you a little summary, by God's grace, with God's help, and go straight into our teaching today. By the way, those of you who have not been here the last two nights, you can, I think it was recorded, right? For sure? Okay, so go to Paul, go to, forgot his name, the dear man over there, the saint over there, and they will... <coughs> give you, they will let you listen to the last two nights teachings. What I introduced to you in the last two nights was the Hebraic mindset, the Hebraic thinking, the Hebraic culture, which is all around and in and through our scriptures. And when I say our scriptures, of course, I mean all of this book, both old and new covenant writings or books, okay? Uh, we spoke about the beginning and the end that are very well connected. We went into deep waters yesterday when we connected actually the very end, Revelations 21, Revelation chapter 21, with Genesis 1, 2, and 3. Okay, and we saw how well they all fit. Uh, <clears throat> we spoke about Yeshua who said, I am the Alpha and I am the Omega, right? And we, sp we spoke about the impossibility of putting this phrase on a line, yeah? Because then he has a beginning and he has an end. That, that's, that does not make sense, biblical sense, okay? Because he is eternal, right? So, he is the alpha and he is also the omega. The beginning and the end are the same. We said that Yeshua said at least twice in scriptures, once at that famous first day of the week, the, the Feast of First Fruits, the Resurrection Day, for those who did not get it yet. Uh, intentionally, I don't say Sunday because nobody called it Sunday back then, yeah? Uh, only the Greeks who worshipped the sun god. So, beloved, uh, in that we say that in that first day of the week, Yeshua met with those two disciples of his, right? On the way to Emmaus, and he opened their eyes, remember? And while doing it, their hearts were burning. And what it caused, actually, in their lives, that they just made a change, a shift, 180 degrees shift, while they gave their back to Jerusalem on the way to Emmaus. Now, after he opened the scriptures with them, they just turned and went back to Jerusalem. We say that we all need to look back to Jerusalem and leave Rome or anything which represents Babylon, the harlot, behind. Okay, I just added it now. So, beloved, <clears throat> Yeshua also say, he opened the scriptures in Luke 24, that's what I was talking about, the road to Emmaus. He opened the scriptures, actually there were no New Testament scriptures back then, right? 
we establish this truth, historical truth. Uh, the first church, the first believing community, you can call it synagogue, congregations as we call it in Israel, they did not have the books of the new covenant. So what did they read? What did they preach out of? Yeah, of course what we call mistakenly the old covenant scriptures. We saw in Luke 24 that Yeshua opened the scriptures beginning from Moses through the prophets, etc. Right? Are you still following? Then we read, oh, we didn't, I forgot already what, we, what I did yesterday, so you forgive me, okay? <laughs> uh, I think, at least in one of those meetings here in California, we also quoted John 5. If you would believe Moses, you would believe me, because Moses wrote about me. Actually, this is the title of my book, my new book, not the one outside, yeah? Moses wrote about me, where I give a commentary and show on the Torah, books of the Torah. I'm still in Genesis, uh, but by God's grace, if he gives me health, if I, I'm still alive, hopefully I will finish five books of Moses, portrait, foreshadows of Yeshua throughout the Torah. And we touched on it a little bit. Remember yesterday, first Adam, second or last Adam? Remember, as first Adam took the fruit out of love, Second Adam comes and takes the fruit sin out of love. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there are recordings. Now, let's start with today's teaching. If you will, please open in Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, chapter 3. And Paul, or Shaul from Tarsus, in messianic circles, they like to call him Rabbi Shaul. Rabbi is a teacher. <clears throat> Second Corinthians, chapter 3. Do we begin <clears throat> again to, co uh, to commend ourselves, Paul says to the Corinthians, or do we need, as some others, epistles of uh, commendation to you or letters of commendations from you. You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly you are an epistle of Messiah ministered by us, written not with ink but by the spirit of the living God, Ruach HaKodesh, not on tablets of stones, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the art. <clears throat> and we have such trust through Messiah toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, Brit Hadasha. We touched on it yesterday, if you remember, Jeremiah 31, 31, new covenant which was made by God and his people Israel. While Gentiles are joining in as first class citizens. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills but the Spirit gives life. Now I want you to make a little leap to verse, verse 12. Therefore, since we have such hope, Paul says, Shaul says, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. By the way, before you run into conclusions, he does not speak about the Torah which passed away. He speaks about the face of Moses. You can read it throughout this chapter and you will see in the context, okay? Context, 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 okay? Uh, but their minds were blinded, verse 14. For until this day, and we are a messianic synagogue. We are very privileged that we are not unlike other synagogues. 
who are not believing in Yeshua. Jewish synagogues, till this very day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Covenant. It should be not Testament, yeah? Torah. Because the veil is taken away in Messiah. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. This is so, so sad. At least as an Israeli Jew, I tell you, this is so sad. Because they do read their Torah. They do know their scriptures. At least the religious ones. I don't speak about the 50% in Judaism, modern Judaism, which are secular. They care less about those things. Yeah? I'm talking about those God-fearing, those people who yearn for the coming of the Messiah. They read the Torah. They, they read what I'm going to read from this portion today. But there is a veil which was actually thickened and thickened more and more in the last 18, 1900 years of so-called Christian history. The veil started already in Isaiah 6, by the way. Remember the cyclical? It was thickened in Yeshua's time, and it was even more thickened throughout the history of Christianity. Read the book, Our Hands Are Stained with Blood, by Dr. Michael Brown, a Messianic Jew. And uh, you will see what I'm talking about, how the veil was thickened even more. The veil on the faces of the Jews. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the Adon, in Hebrew, Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, and are being transformed into the, the same image from glory to glory, just a, as by the Spirit of the Lord. So, Till this very day, when they read Moses, they have a veil on their eyes, on their face. Are you with me? Let's turn and take one example from how Torah portion. This week's Torah portion, Shoftim. This, uh, Rachel did, did such a wonderful, where is she? Wonderful job reading it, yeah? Uh, turn with me, please, to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 18, our portion, and let's read what all of us know by heart, I mean, uh, we can recite it, yeah, especially the Messianic Jews among us and the Messianic Gentiles as well. Verse 14 of Deuteronomy 18. Intentionally, I don't start in the following verse, verse 15, because it will take away the context. Okay? For those nations, Moses says to, the, to his people, just before crossing the Jordan River. You know that all the book of Deuteronomy was written, was given by Moses to his people, in the last five to six weeks of Moses' life, on the, in the plains, the geographic locations, the plains of Moab, just before crossing the Jordan, across Jericho. Are you with me? So he prepares them for the crossing. Now you know already, I think I spoke with you or with others yeah, already, about the parallelism between the story of our salvation and the story of the exodus of our forefathers. Are you with me? As, the, as our forefathers, I will repeat it just for those who don't know what I'm talking about. As our forefathers applied the blood of the Passover lamb on their lintels and doorposts, oh, I, I do like this, I should not, on the real ones, yeah, in Egypt, and thus were taken out of Egypt. So you and me, all of us, had our Passover experience because we applied not just a lamb blood, you know, any lamb, yeah, but we applied the lamb of Passover's blood, you remember? on our lintels, now I can do it, in our doorpost. Clear? As they were baptized, taken, raptured out of Egypt, taken out of Egypt, 
in the middle of the night, yeah? And we are baptized into Moses and into the cloud, so we did the same. We were baptized into the second Moses, Yeshua, right? Jesus, Yeshua. And we were baptized into the cloud, into the Holy Spirit, right? As they stood at Mount Sinai, we stood at Mount Zion at Pentecost. We had our, also our, you know, our uh, Pentecost experience. Are you with me? As they walked the walk in the wilderness on their way to the promised land, promised land, that's what we do today. We are walking towards the promised land. And the walk is not easy, to say the least. It has bumps. It has uh, valleys of shadow of death on the way. Don't be surprised. This You are following the pattern of your forefathers. Clear? As they crossed eventually, eventually the Jordan River into their promised inheritance, that's why they were taken out of Egypt, not to be stuck on Mount Sinai, right? As they crossed under the leadership of Joshua and not Moses, because Moses does not take you to, the, to your promised land. Moses takes you only to the Jordan River. Torah does not let you in. It's Yeshua, Joshua, who lets you in. Not doing away with the Torah, but giving a new perspective to the Torah in your inheritance. Are you with me? So Moses are, is preparing the people just before the crossing of the Jordan. And let me tell you something. Ho saints, holy people in the Yeshua's blood, beloved people of God. Let me tell you, we are at the Jordan River. We are almost in the Jordan River. We are, we are in the plains of Moab spiritually. Are you with me? Yeshua is coming soon. We are going to cross over very soon. So we do need to prepare ourselves, don't we? Actually, I'm doing these trips, you know, teaching trips every summer, sometimes twice, also winter, yeah? Uh, and <clears throat> God gives me themes to teach, you know? And I develop it as, as he allows me by his grace. At each place I do, do it the same, a bit different, okay? But the last two or three years, he actually impresses on my heart to prepare the people. First of all, myself. <laughs> yeah, you know, every good preacher preaches to himself first. And teacher, yeah? So, we need to be prepared because we are almost at the crossing line. Are you still following? So, let's see what God has to, do, to tell us in his holy Torah, in the book of Deuteronomy, in the plains of Moab, just before crossing the river. For those nations which you will dispose, dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. Which means the context of the following verses is false teachers. False teachers, you know, oh, the Lord told me, the Lord did this, you know, whatever. The Lord your God, verse 15, will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst. From your brethren, him you shall hear. Listen carefully. We should not have the veil on our eyes when we read those verses. Because when the Jews in the synagogues today, on the Sabbath holiday, read this, they think, ah, he talks, he talks about Jeremiah, he talks about Isaiah, he talks about many prophets. No, he talks about singular prophet here. And the context, soon you will be amazed how the how the verse, the closing verse, closing the context for us and shows and points to the Messiah, not to any other prophet. Let's continue. From your brethren, him you shall hear, verse 16, according to all you desired of the Lord your God in Horev, in the day of the assembly saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, not let me see this great fire anymore, lest I die. And I will take you soon back to, to Exodus to deal with it, to elaborate on it. 
What is the context, please listen carefully, of God raising a prophet like Moses? Bigger than Moses, actually, yeah? Yeshua. What? What is the context? Number one, possessing the, the inheritance. And in that inheritance, there are still enemies to drive out. Soothsayers, false prophets, are you with me? No, you do not listen to anyone. You listen only to him, to Yeshua, to Joshua, who crosses the Jordan with you, for you. Are you with me? And the most amazing thing here in the context is that God raises this prophet like you raised Moses. Why? Because the people did not wish to hear God personally. Did you get it? I just read it. Don't, if you disagree with me, you disagree with the, Bali, with the Bible. Friends, God raises Moses and he puts him as a mediator on Mount Sinai between the people and him. And the Jews now argue with me and say, oh, we do not need mediators. Really? You ask for it. Don't you know your own Torah? Yes, they know their own Torah, but they have a veil. Are you with me? And the veil is lifted only when Yeshua gives them an encounter. It's not logic. For us, it seems so logical. Of course, he speaks singular. He speaks, no. Moses was a mediator. Yeshua is a mediator. Of course, for us, because the veil was lifted because we had an encounter with the living God. Are you with me? But it's important to understand the context again is there are many false teachers around. And you yourself did not desire to hear God personally. You are afraid that you will die. So here I give you Yeshua. Here I give you Moses. Let's continue. <clears throat> And the Lord said to me, what they have spoken is good. I will raise up from them a prophet like you from among their brethren and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that I commanded him. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. And then he speaks, goes on to speak about false prophets false prophets, you know, and how we can di differentiate between real prophecy and not real prophecy. By the way, the church today is filled, and I'm talking also messianic synagogues. Unfortunately, I will not exaggerate and say filled, but here and there you hear false prophecies. Under the cover of, or the excuse of grace, we lost the reverence, we lost the fear of God. I have, a, I have a sense, you know, that this, uh, this uh, dear woman suffers from this and this. So the Lord told me. Yeah? She goes home. One day passes, one week passes, one year, nothing is fulfilled. Under the Torah, she should come and tell Rabbi, you should put me in the middle and stone me. Yep, as a false prophet. Where is the fear of God? Why do you think that God has changed? Do you think he changed under the new covenant? No. No, 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 no. The book of Hebrews tells me that ooh, it's even more scary to, <laughs> to see now under the new covenant than under the old covenant. Yeshua raised the bar of the, you know, of the old covenant. Ooh, I don't know how, how many... Miles, beloved, I want to elaborate with your permission on verse 16. According to all you, all you desired of the Lord your God in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, nor let me see this great fire anymore, lest I die. 
turn with me please to Exodus. The letter kills, the spirit gives life. What in the world does Paul speak about? And guess what? It is the spirit which will let you in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Messiah and not the letter. I tell you again, it's not the letter and how well you know to read the Torah portions without any mistakes, how well you know the melody. It's not how well you know where to do this. I'm not sarcastic. I'm serious. It's not how well you know to raise your hands, okay, or quote scriptures or quote the seed of prayers which are wonderful. It is not the letter but the spirit which will let you in. What am I talking about? There are two levels of worshipping the Lord God Almighty. One he is the soulish level. Are you with me? Soulish, our apprehendance, our understanding, our log logic, our emotions, okay? The way we process things. And this relates to the Torah, the letter that kills. And there is yet another level, the spiritual level, which is full dependency on God's attributes. Full dependency on God Almighty. Full dependency on Joshua and not on Moses. Soon you will see what I'm talking about. Turn with me to Mount Sinai event and I'm going to show you that Mount Sinai event is not only Mount Sinai event, it also foreshadows for us Mount Golgotha event. No, Mount Sinai is Mount Sinai, is Moses, no? No, no, Yeshua there, really? Let us find Yeshua on Mount Sinai. Because Yeshua wants us to look at the Torah, not through the letter, but through the spirit. Are you with me? So let's get now into this deeper waters, with your permission. Exodus 20. First, let's, after the, the announcing of the Ten Commandments, verse 18 says the following. Verse 18, Exodus 20, verse 18. Now all the people witnessed the thun thunders and lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet, by the way, trumpet, which kept going stronger and stronger, Show me one human being who can, you know, blow the trumpet and continue and continue and even be stronger. It was God himself. Jewish rabbis in their traditions agree. I mean, I agree with them. You know, no human being can blow the shofar like it was on Mount Sinai because it was stronger and stronger. <laughs> can you imagine you, need, you, you would need earplugs? I'm not joking. No wonder the people react like they react in verse 18. The sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. Wouldn't you? Scary, scary event. Then they said to Moses, you speak with us and we will hear. But let not God speak with us lest we die. Are you with me? Lest we die. So Moses says, it's okay, it's for you, it's to test you, if you will hear, yeah? The next verses, he calms them down, and like was required, desired by them, he goes now to the mountain to receive the tablets. Are you following? And while he's in the mountain, times goes by, because he gets instruction about the tabernacle, you know. He has some intimate fellowship with the Almighty on the top of the smoking mountain and the people start to be impatient. Turn with me to 
the ch chapter 32, please. Chapter 32. The people start to be impatient. Beloved, what is one of the fruit of the Spirit? Patience. You know the word in Hebrew for patience? Savlanut. You know where it is taken from, or the root word? Sevel, suffering. Please do not pray without knowledge. Do not ask God to give you patience because he is a faithful God. He will give it to you through sufferings. I mean it. Lisbol is to suffer. Several suffering, savlanut, patience, long endurance. Yeah? Beloved, so they, they don't have patience and look what they say, what they dare saying in chapter 32. Are you still okay with me? Okay, 32. Now, when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to his brother Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods, aselanu Elohim in Hebrew, gods that shall go before us, for as for this Moses, look at me, they made Moses God. They idolize Moses like Jews or ultra-Orthodox today. Woe to you if you speak bad about Moses. Almost like a god. They idolize rabbis today as well. Schneor, son, and others, okay? The men who brought us up out of the land of Egypt. Excuse me? Did he bring you up out of the land of Egypt? You see our flesh our flesh never will be satisfied in simple faith, which is trusting things which are not seen. God is a spirit. They did not see him, right? But they saw the mediator. They saw Moses. So now Moses is out of their sight, and they start, ah, where is this God, little G? Where is he? Moses was just a tool. Let's continue. We do not know what has become of him. Verse 2. And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings. And you know the story, right? They start to hoop la hula around the golden calf. And you know, Aaron, it's very funny. When, when, when Moses asks me later on, What did he do? Oh, come on. I asked him to bring some gold, you know, earrings. I just dropped it in the fire, and that's what came. If you don't believe me, read it. That's what came. I mean, excuse me. <laughs> Blame shifting. Adam and Eve. Nothing is new under the sun. Beloved, if you ask any rabbi, Orthodox rabbi today, what are, today, what are the most tragic events in Jewish history, one of them will be the, the worst was when the spies came back. Okay? On Tisha Be'av. Okay? According to Jewish tradition, it was on the 9th of Av, the Jewish, on the Jewish calendar. You, know, you remember what happened on the 9th of Av? Besides other atrocities, yeah, events, the temple, two temples were destroyed on this same night when the spies came. Yeah? But another one was the split of the kingdom of Israel into two houses after Solomon's sin. Actually, it was because of Solomon. Okay? And another one, tragic event, was this event. Building, craving, the, carving the golden calf. Beloved, what? What a sin. I mean, can you imagine? Only 40 days passed since the event. The mountain shook. They heard God speaking the ten words. Are you with me? Ten commandments. Crazy. How short of a memory we have. Remember I told you, it's the same show played on the stage, but the actress and the actresses are changed. If you have been with me the last two nights, I said it, yeah? God gives us the gospel already in the four first chapters of the Bible. Genesis 1, 2, 3, 4. That's all. 
The rest is repetition. Why? Because we tend to forget. Over seven or nine hundred times, God says in his word, remember. Doesn't show, put us in a very good position as smarties. Right? Oh, I remember. No, you don't remember. You need to be re reminded again and again. Are you still following? So, the tr a tragic event indeed. Forty days pass and they do exactly what God told them in the first and second commandment not to do. <laughs> How dummy can you be? We can be very dummies. Even as believers in Yeshua. Because we are still in this framework. We are in this clash. Flesh, yeah? <clears throat> Let's continue. So, God, God tells Moses, go, go down. Look what they do, yeah? And verse 9 says, And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen that these people, and indeed it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. Woohoo! Once saved, always saved. <laughs> First Corinthians 10 tells us that with most of them, he did not really. He disliked God. Most of those that he took out of Egypt. Because salvation is a process. The one who sustains till the very end shall be saved. Are you with me? Here he tells Moses, excuse me, let me alone and I will consume all these two, three, four million people. And I will make out of you a great nation. Moses, a wonderful picture of, God, of Yeshua, starts to plead for the nation. For the, I don't know how many times he does it, yeah? And God forgives. But... There are some consequences, as you know. So let's read it. Here is a picture of breaking the old covenant and the need for a new covenant. Verse 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mountain, and the two tablets of testimony were in his hand. The tablets were written on both sides, on one side and on the other they were written now the tablets were the work of God, and the writings was writings of God engraved on tablets. Come on. Did you notice that the second tablets were not the work of God? Who noticed it? Who noticed that the first covenant was fully was from God? On tablets of stones. The second covenant of a picture of the second covenant, the second time to go to get the Torah, the ten words, yeah? Is this time, yes, in tablets of stones, but made by Moses. It's a picture. We bring the tablets of, of stone, our tablets of stone, and let God inscribe his words on them. The new covenant. Are you with me? So, he goes up. <clears throat> I'm, I'm sorry, he goes down, yeah? And when Joshua heard, okay, let's continue. Verse 9, so it was as soon as he came near the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing, the hoopla hula. So Moses' anger became hot and he cast the tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. This is a picture of breaking the Torah, breaking the first covenant. Are you with me? So there is yet another covenant to be signed between God and his people in the shape of the second two tablets. Are you following? But this time, and I'm bringing you from the soulish level, which we could not abide by, it's broken. Are you with me? Now I bring you to the spiritual level, the only way you can enter the kingdom of God. Are you ready? And let's take Mount Sinai as a picture of God's, it's not a picture, God was there. God's presence, God's presence is always in the Holy Land, in Jerusalem. 
Are you with me? And here, Mount Sinai, take it as a picture. Even the book of uh, Galatians compares between Mount Sinai and Jerusalem of today. Are you with me? Okay? So take Mount Sinai as a picture, please, and follow me. What is the way to approach God Almighty in order to get the new covenant? Woo! Are you ready? Look at this. By the way, the letter kills. You know how many were killed that Shavuot day? About 3,000. By the way, about. Because the Hebrew say ke, about. You know how many were saved in yet another Pentecost event? About 3,000. When they received the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? At Pentecost. About. Coincidence? or cyclical. Why the Holy Spirit needed to be pure on Pentecost? Because the Torah was given in Pentecost. But they could not keep it, so now they have the Spirit to help them keep it. Are you with me? So let's continue. There, uh, chapter 33. 33. Exodus 33. We go to the next level. Then the Lord said to Moses, Depart and go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, to the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, To your descendants I will give it. And I will send my angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, etc., etc., etc. Look at verse 4. By the way, in other words, God says, I am not going to join you. I'm sending somebody else. How do I know it? Because Moses understood it like this. Verse 4. And when the people heard... Oh, sorry. Wait, wait, sorry. Where was I? No, no, I know, I know. But it's okay, it's okay. Verse 4. The, the children of Israel understood, yeah? When the, the people heard the, this bad news that God is not going with them, they, mur they <coughs> mourned, and no one put his ornaments. For the Lord said to Moses, said to the children of Israel, You are a stiff-necked people. I could come up into you, into your midst in one moment and consume you. Now, therefore, take off your etc., etc. Okay? Are you ready? Verse 7. This is before Moses goes again to the mountain. Before. Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the Tabernacle of Meeting. Look at me. Not many know it, but there were two Tabernacles of Meeting in the wilderness. There was one which is described here, which was put outside the camp of Israel. Are you with me listening, please? Outside, there is a principle outside the camp of Israel, where Joshua was inside maintaining the tent, the tent of meeting, Joshua, Yeshua, while there was later on another tabernacle where the Ark of the Covenant and all the religious activity was in the midst of the camp. Are you with me? Those who wanted to seek God's faith to go to the next level, which is Beyond and above the religious activity, the letter which kills needed to go outside the camp. Read it, it's there. I don't have time to read it. They, those who wanted to seek, those who sought the Lord, went to, they went outside the camp. It's a principle. You really are interested in God, you need to leave the camp. I do not mean leave your assembly. I do not mean don't come here anymore on, Shabbat, on Sabbath. I mean you need to desire more than just sitting here in the Sabbath. You need in your personal life to go outside the camp where Joshua is waiting for you, Yeshua. Yeshua was taken outside the camp, outside of Jerusalem as well. All the prophets were outside the camp. They were outside the box. They wanted more than just good prayers, good sacrifices, good activities, good ministries. 
I have this ministry, you have that ministry. No, but what about intimacy? God is calling us to stop being Martha, but Mary. Busy, 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 busy. I have this ministry, I have this, and I need to, eh, eh, relax. Why not come to me? Sit on my lap. Talk to me. Just imagine your children were all day long busy with orders that you give them. Clean the toilet, do this, do this, do this. This is really, this is a family? I mean, we need sometimes, you know, when the children say, hi, daddy, and kiss him, moochie poochie, right? Why? Because this and this only recharge your batteries. You will find yourself burned out completely if you stay in the camp. Are you with me? Next thing, and I will try to do it uh, quick, next thing which will bring you to the highest level of worship before crossing the Jordan is found in the next chapter. Uh, sorry, still the same chapter, verse 17. Yes, verse 12. <laughs> verse 12. Then Moses, I am in Deuteronomy 33, verse 12. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. Excuse me, Moses. You don't need to listen. I'm talking to Moses now. Are you crazy? Show me your way. Don't you have enough burning bush? Don't you have enough the ten plagues that I used you and your brother to do? Don't you have enough, you know, the applying the blood of the Passover and how, I, how the Egyptians drove you out in panic? Don't you have enough, I mean, that, that I uh, divided the, the Red Sea for you? Show me your way. same principle. There are some among us who are satisfied with coming and sitting on Saturday or on Sunday, yeah, in churches, and meh, eat, and think this is enough, and go home and continue with their own ways. You are not going to make it. You need to go outside the camp to meet your Lord. Are you with me? And you need to always, always say, show me your way because it's not enough. You are awesome. I only touched a little drop of your ocean. I want all the ocean. I want to sweep deep and deep and deeper and deeper till I will meet the essence of you. If Moses was humble enough to ask God, who are you? Who am I? To say, oh, I'm satisfied. I'm a messianic Jew. I go every sh Sabbath here. I even know how to pray. I know all the Siddur, the Jewish prayer, by heart. Excuse me? My friends, if, you're, if your hearts are not burning within yourself, you know, to know more and more of him, something is wrong. Because you are stuck. You are stagnant. The river is there. And you just look at it, hi, you sing about the river, you know about the river, but you don't make the step towards the river. Let's continue. So the Lord, verse uh, 17, so the Lord said to Moses, we are almost finished, please have mercy with me. I will also do this thing for, for you that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my, my sight, and I know you by the name. And he said, please show me your Glory. Excuse me, Moses. I'm talking again to Moses. Haven't you been in his glory just a few days ago? When he proclaimed the ten words, where was Moses? He was given the, the ten words, right? Show me your glory. God's glory, heaven and earth cannot contain it. Are you with me? How dare we put it in this box? Heaven and earth can to cannot contain his glory. I showed you some of my PowerPoints about the galaxies. <laughs> can you imagine that this is, Papa did it? Papa made it. 
that he made it. Can we apprehend his glory? No. That's why we need to have a heart which seeks more and more and more and more. Endless more of his glory. Show me your glory. Beloved, do you want to see his glory? The Bible tells us how. Shall I share it with you? To conclude this message. How? The only way to see God's glory is in the same way Moses experienced it. No shortcuts. Verse 18. Uh, verse 19. Then he said, I will make my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to, to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And thus the Lord said, here is a place. Again, here is a place by me. <clears throat> by the way, it's not by me, it's with me in Hebrew. Here is a place with me, and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be, while my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back but my face shall not be seen. And he carves the two tablets, and he goes, and exactly that what, that's what, what's happened in verse 5 of the next chapter. Now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, this is your devilry, the, the name of the Lord, yeah? Merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. So Moses made haste and bowed down. Did you see the picture? Number one, to prepare yourself to see God's glory, wake up, we are concluding. To prepare yourself to see God's glory, you need to go out of the box. You need to have desire of more and more and more of him. Are you with me? In your personal life, between Sabbath, one Sabbath to another, you need to pursue his Tent of meeting which is outside the camp. You need Yeshua who was also pushed away outside the camp. You need to be willing to bear his reproach. Are you with me? To be looked at as strangers. Oh, you're a fanatic. Oh, come on. Yeshua was fanatic. All the prophets were fanatic. And number two, step number two, you want to see his glory? You want to go to his mountain? There is only one way to do it. While you are hidden in the cleft of Yeshua, the rock. There is a place with me. His name is Yeshua. His name is the rock. Sur Yeshua Tenu. The rock of our, of our salvation. You cannot approach God unless you are in Messiah. You cannot see God's even not back. You cannot appreciate his goodness unless you are hidden, protected in the rock of your salvation. The new covenant is already in the old covenant. Now, now you understand me? One was broken. It was not enough. Three thousand people, about three, were killed. The letter which kills. The next one is a complete different approach. I don't deserve anything. I, I need you. I need more of you. I need more of you and more of you. Really? Okay. I provided the way. Here is the rock. Let, you, let me put you inside the rock, inside my son. This is the only way you can get 
closer to me. We are no different than Moses, beloved. We need to seek his glory on daily, on hourly basis. We need to seek his goodness on hourly basis. We need to seek more and more of him. This is the only guarantee that you will make it. Because only close to his bosom, in protected inside Messiah, you can have intimacy with him. You cannot do it by keeping the Torah or by keeping that or by keeping that. You need intimacy. You need to be with him. And then the Torah will flow through you. Amen? God bless you.